Good afternoon, good evening, good morning. This is the Wix online meeting number 62, beginning of April, rolling through 2015 like it isn't even there. Um, as always, this meeting is recorded for those people that aren't here right now with us. Looks like we have a pretty typical crew, so there's probably a lot of you watching this online or something like that. Anyway, uh, I snuck an item on the agenda just because, well, it came up and I thought I'd toss it on, um, keep people on their toes and stuff like that. Um, if we don't get a good discussion, we can always bring it up next week and try again with more people. Uh, so we'll do triage. Not a lot of bugs to talk about, but we'll do that. And then um, since we're talking about bugs, we'll talk about bugs in the GitHub issue tracker things and stuff like that and see what people have to think about that. And then always we'll do questions, comments at the end um, for any of the questions, comments people might have. Uh, so, Bob, triage. Let's do it. Do the web. Um, four bugs. There's three last time I looked, I thought. Oh, well. Sensitive data not hidden in command line dump. Yeah, this is probably sad, isn't it? Yeah, this is the first line we log when we open up um, the burn log. So we haven't done any of the magic processing that we do yeah. to hide hidden variables. It's and it's a problem. Basically, it's a problem if you end up with a force restart somewhere. Um, but I guess it's also a problem if you want to, you know, just pass, pass properties on the yeah. command line. Yeah. Yeah, we should fix this. I would agree. We're not going to fix it three nine. Um, that seems unlikely. Um, but it is, I'd say, fixable in three X. Yes, definitely. Um, yeah, I'm not sure. Um, I've been doing, I've, I've had a very bad habit of just saying, oh, let me assign this to myself and I'll go take a look at it. Um, I don't know that I want to take this in 310 if we don't have someone to, to go do it. Mm -hmm. Um, I'm not sure when I'll get around to it. No, it goes in 3x, then we should definitely fix it. Yeah, yeah, let's do that. Wait, no, Sean is half-heartedly. Oh, wow. He there wants to plug in 310. Look at that. Hey, Super you duper. know, this 310, it's, it's a fun place to hang out. Mm, yeah, sure. I have lost my mouse cursor, because of course. So, oh, mouse, yay, keyboard. Thank you, Sean. You know, remind me to bring up the keyboard again on our next topic item. Just made me think about that as many times as I have to deal with the keyboard. Um, <laughs> documentation for service config elements links to wrong MSI documentation. Oh, well, we should fix that. Um. Yeah, yeah, that, yeah that just give it to me. Thing. I'll fix it. I'll fix it. Won't take right. that long to do it. Yeah. Oops. Question concerning .NET FX 4 or 5 payload replacement. Questions don't go here. In right. the link above, in step 3, it says we can override remote payload, have it embedded inside our installer. I am able to embed it. My install is bigger than usual. Okay, but fortunately, it still says downloading and doing tests on a VM without internet. Um, I remember that. Why? Why is it a group? Oh, because you can't put a payload. I don't think you put a payload there. I, I guess. You can, yeah, you can't put a payload. Yeah, the, it's a weird one. You can't put a payload in a bundle. Oh, you um, can put a payload, payload group. group in a bundle. Yes, but if you do that and you put it in the bundle. Oh, wait. Payload group ref this. Package group ref that. Yes, but doesn't. If you put. Oh, you put the payload group in the bundle and that prevents it from becoming a bundle, a layout payload? What? 
why is this payload group defined in the bundle? Um, it works. Okay. Perhaps it's not the best, but it works. I mean, obviously, you could you could do a payload group and then a payload group ref. Um, well, yeah, that's going to get the same thing. Yeah. Okay. So it's the same basic thing. Yeah. You 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 can't attach it. You don't need a payload at all. You just have to put the no. You just have to put the file in the right place. Um. At least okay. I, in, I mean, this is basically just getting it to copy the file to the correct place. I yes. cannot click that link. I have no mouse cursor. How frustrating! <laughs> oh, I got it! Wow! <laughs> you have no idea how hard that that was. Completely blind. I see. So yeah, you can do that. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Uh, are you suggesting there's another better way? Um, well, this is basically causing the payload to get put to the right place. Yeah. So that's all it's doing. Well, but if you wanted an attached bundle, or attached container, in, to, in your bundle. Oh, how, oh, how oh, you oh, that? sorry, sorry. Yes, right, sorry. If you want the attached container, right, you do have to specify what container it goes in, which by this case is probably doing the default. Yeah. Right, 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 right. Sorry. No, no, I just, uh, I wanted to make sure I wanted to, I wrote that doc, so I wanted to make sure I wasn't missing anything. Okay. Um, so... Yeah. Uh, it could be the okay. name's wrong. Yeah, that's. Um, I was going to go check that out. Um, if I could do so, you know, quietly and quickly without making it obvious, like I'm doing right now. Um, Oh, yeah, that's the wrong name. Good. So, we don't have a strong naming to tie those things together, but that would explain the problem. Wait. Oh, maybe it's not. No? Mm -hmm. 445 full? The x86, x64 thing is familiar. Yeah, that's no, I think it's correct. Uh, this is a question. Send it to Wix users, get log, and then yeah. we'll find out if there's a bug. There entirely yeah. could be a bug, but it shouldn't be. I'm not doing questions here. Unassign it. Yes. That, well, no, just, yeah, unassign it and say, go ask questions on Wix users' mailing list. Web documentation bug on quiet execution custom action on this page. Uh, yeah, right. No way am I going to grab this one. No. <laughs> no, get closer. Oh, I get the whole paragraph. Oh. <laughs> Painful. All right, so what does it say? On that page, if you follow the example under running 64 bit examples, the second block of XML that uses the return ignore. Second block property return check ignore. Where's the ignore? I'm assuming it's the, yeah. Bad. Okay. Custom action property with property value ignore. Okay, cool. When you, you can ice invalid custom action type with deferred ex oh type fifty ones can't have ignore. Could it ever fail? No, I just never thought about it. Yeah. Custom, da, da 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 return ignore. It's unsupported for property settings. Yeah, okay. You probably can leave the return off completely. Check. Um, that's, I was looking through. It's like, yeah, check is default and ignore doesn't make sense. Cool. So we okay. should just remove. So the doc is busted. We should remove ignore from there. Yeah. I'll and, take this one. Okay. And possibly use set property instead, but whatever. Um, cool. Oh, actually, that's a good point. I have to look at uh, the changes that Mike made as well. 
to that page. Yeah, right. So. Do, 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 do. Um. All right. Boom. That's it. Don't triage. Nice. What was that? Three doc bugs and a question for help? Yeah. Is that really Compared to previous weeks, this was pretty light. That, nice. We deserve a week off. There you go. Um, holy cow, look at all these people that are showing up. I look away and, oh, it's not that many. It's right. your fault, Sean. You volunteered. Sean, I got the real bug. Yes, right. Sean did get the real bug. But we didn't give it to him. He asked for it. All right. So on that note, um, this has come up a few times and a few times just in the last couple weeks. So I thought I'd bring it up here because I missed this bit of news, this functionality until recently tripped across it, um, that actually makes it that we could potentially move off of uh, this little tiny bugs thing for our issue tracker, move it into GitHub issue tracker. The, the feature I had missed for quite a while is the issues dashboard which is a thing that you can use to search or show issues cross repo. You can even do it for pull requests, but in this case, bugs are worth that. Um, obviously, the main win of that is that it is better integrated with uh, GitHub and it is better maintained. Not to say that we couldn't do all the integration and better maintain tiny bugs. It's just that given time pressures, it's probably not going to do a whole lot more than what it does now. But TinyBugs does our triage process really, really, really well because, well, that's what it was designed to do. It's funny how that works out. Yeah, to allow us to move bugs and to give them to people um, that don't necessarily have, you know, permissions in the repo because we have all the legal stuff that we do on the other side. Um, so, for example, one of the big problems with the GitHub issue tracker is uh, we think we found a way such that you can... Um, uh, you can look at bugs uh, that you can edit. You can be <laughs> added to a team in the Wix toolset organization that should be able to then have bugs assigned to you. But you'll have to be a member of that before you can be a bugs, which probably isn't that big a deal because <laughs> most of the people that take bugs show up here or at least have some sort of relationship. So that's probably not a big deal. The other thing is that there's no reopen for triage. Uh, you cannot, unless you have basically full access to the repo, you can't edit um, labels on issues, which means you can't like remove the label that we put on it that says triaged. You can't take that back off to say, no, will you please retriage this? So that's unfortunate, which means that we would probably have to do a state-based search in it um, across all of the bugs to say, here are the bugs that changed since the last time that we did triage. Uh, Heath asks how often that happens. It happens mm, twice a month, maybe, uh, right. on average. So one out of every, I don't know, 10 bugs, 15 bugs, something like that. Um, so another, well, the problem is that it's not discoverable to know. So we would have somebody say, hey, I want to leave a comment on this bug, and there's a big check this box that says, please reopen for triage, where on GitHub you'd get nothing. So we'd have to be doing date-based searches, which means we pick up all the other stuff and have to you know, ignore that from one week to the next, or two weeks or three weeks or whatever. So it really comes down to how many changes happen to bugs in between there that don't require triage. Just look, I guess we'd have to, that's the one question. Can, do you know if you can watch an entire issue tracker? I'm just wondering if, if people leave comments, will will they be something that watchers can notice? Yes. And then maybe go add the, you know, remove the tag or whatever. Yes, but only collaborators can modify the tag, so that wouldn't right. help us a lot. Well, so... You and I would have to be picking those kinds of yeah, things up. Yeah, that's... So we get somebody else that we gets through the legal mumbo jumbo that can take pull requests into that and all that kind of stuff. So, right. but then it's it's still manual. It's not like the hey here's the reopen button. Um, yeah. But anyway, so that's one downside. But it's not that one's not a huge one because we do at least have date based searches that would get us. Yeah. The delete create uh, reference to move cross major versions. This is unfortunate. It's very easy for us to move bugs around in the single tracker because it's like yeah just mark it in this. 
uh, you know, mark it with whatever milestone it's in, and poof, the bug has moved into that area. Um, we would lose that for bugs that we wanted to move, like from you know Wix 3x to Wix 4, or a bug that we want to move from 4 to say this is not a Wix 4 bug or a 3 bug. This is a you know a site bug, so go put it on the site, the website repository and stuff like that. So you have to delete the bug, create it in a new place, and add a ref across to tie it all together. I hate, I forgot about the site. Yes. Because so obviously we get a number of those, and that's not going to be where people will. Not necessarily. Open bugs. Yes. And it, it's actually worse than that because a lot of our documentation comes from the right, the correct repo. Exactly. So, yeah. So yeah. It, that ends up, that one ends up being kind of a mess. Um, That's a pain. Plus, then there's also the, the thing that when Wix 3X is done, 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 what do we do with all those bugs? Do we move them? All that, things like that. Um, um, so I, I don't know what to do about the mass migration stuff there. I expect it would just be this big, ugly shift across things. So that's um, unfortunate, but that's probably what would have to happen. Um, there's also a question of how keyboard accessible it is, given how many times I have to use the keyboard due to Link doing whatever <laughs> it does. Yeah. Um, which is, I'm sure Skype is bug-free. Uh, maybe. That would be nice. Yeah. Um, yeah, it has keyboard shortcuts, but they're not always... Can I navigate clear. from one bug to yeah. the next without, you know, by hitting tabs and stuff like that? So anyway, we'll have to go play with it. I, I expect it'll probably be fine. Um, so then we get the whole migration junk, uh, you know, of... We get all new bug numbers, which, yeah, we do whatever we do there, and then we need a tool to migrate us from wixtoolset.org to issues, you know, whatever. But that's pretty much uh, par for course for anything, anything, all that kind of stuff. Um, so <laughs> That doesn't mean it's no work. That, that's true. I mean, and, you know, this isn't to say we're going to, cool, we're going to decide now we're going to do it. Uh, it took us a long time to move from CodePlex to GitHub as we, you know, made sure that everything would work and do all that and things like that. So, although when we start to move, we kind of have to move, otherwise we're going to keep migrating issues, which doesn't sound like much fun and things like that. Um, but really, it was kind of a non-starter because we needed the ability to see issues across repo. Otherwise, it was just going to be a real annoying to go here, then go to here, then go to here. Like, nah, forget that. But now they have they have the issues to the dashboard. It turns out they've had it since October, so uh, oh. had it for a while. Um. And then there's just these other things that don't work as well for, you know, managing the bugs across all this thing. So anyway, I'm curious if people here now have strong feelings one way or the other, upside down, that way, this way, whatever, um, on these things. Um, I know one of the nicest things, which we could get in tiny bugs if the feature was written, is the ability to close issues with pull requests. You know, that's one of the nice things you can say, fix this number and it will close the bug with the pull request so you don't have to go do extra work. Um, also, if you reference the issue in a pull request, I think it'll put a ref in the issue that says, hey, look, here's a pull request, which you have to do manually today as well um, in the bugs, which is not as much fun either. Um, I'm, I'm interested in, in tagging. I think it could it could really help us as, as, we, as we look at bugs that go, yeah, we really should do this, but, you know, I'm not going to cry if you know, it takes another release um, versus, you know, bugs that we, we don't actively care about, you know, bugs that no one is on on the calls are volunteering to do. And, you know, they're up for grabs, but, you know, they're probably not going to get attention from, from anyone else. Tagging would be really useful there because, um, you know, like right now we have how many, 500 bugs open in 3X? Yeah. Um, it, narrowing that down would be kind of nice. Yeah. Um, I'm also I'm also interested in. Well, I guess the searching searching is handy. You know, there's you can do some interesting queries across the issues. Yes. Um, that you know the tiny bugs has search and. Mostly works okay. Um, but, well, 
the put it this way, GitHub issues query syntax is, you know, well known and easier to use, put it that yep. way. Yep. Sean, you deal with bugs a lot. Do you have any preferences? Would be nice. But I won't be doing the work. He's always yeah. worried about that. <laughs> he won't do any work, so he's mm -hmm. all right. Well, people generally seem to be more interested in doing that than having ours be the way it is. So um, I don't know what we're going to do. I haven't, haven't decided. The, the big problem is I'm I just don't know how well the delete create ref thing is going to work for us. Yeah, this is the this and is how the big often we concern. how often we do it. You know, because um, we yeah. and actually. I, Going to, I expect it's going to get worse as 3x becomes less the thing. We're going to have people going, I want this bug fixed here. And we're like, well, we're never going to fix it in 3, so we immediately have to move to 4. Although maybe we can close the issues then. I don't know. That would hide all of them. I don't know. Um, so anyway, this is there's some usage cases here. may have to go create a test repo with a bunch of issues and experiment with it to feel you know, how much it is and things like that to figure out how it goes. Yeah, and yeah, he brings so up the point that we could automate it. It's like, yeah, we could automate it, or we could just, you know, fix tiny bugs if we're going to fix code. So, you know, it's like, yeah. that's the funny thing is, you know, a couple pieces of things, and we'd have a lot of the features that we wish we had on GitHub on tiny bugs, like closing automatically from pull requests. But, yeah. So, so yeah. Anyway, we'll see. Have to think about it. All right. So, but people generally seem to be leaning towards to be nice if it was all on GitHub. As, as Bob says, we'll just keep going towards the uh, um, uh, the the monoculture of GitHub. Um, <laughs> the GitHub monoculture. That's what it is. Um, all right. I expect we'll talk about this again maybe after people view, view this video since I know I kind of sprung this on people. We'll toss it out there, see if people get more opinions and things like that. In the meantime, I know we lost Jacob. He had some question about bundles. Oh, why'd it go? There, sorry. Too far. Click too far. I was trying to scroll up, and I ended up scrolling the PowerPoint. Uh, uh, Jacob said he had to run. He's going to bring another pull request. He has questions about stuff. Okay. Uh, anything else? We're at three minutes, starting a little late again due to the link crash. Um, but hopefully we'll get a video out of all of this, after all. Um, anything, anything? Quiet stuff? Good things? Things going on? All right. Well, I've been talking to myself for a minute and no movement. I think I took everybody's collective wind out of their sails, and I went, oh, let's move. You know, you could think about moving to GitHub. Said, what? No questions after that. All right, so on that note, I think we're going to call it a day. Everybody go back to work, get stuff done, do your do the things that you do. Um, and next week we'll pick it up. We'll see how many bugs we have next week, and we'll just keep building up that backlog that one day we may migrate um, or not. Maybe we'll just add features to tiny bugs. Um, until then, you guys take it easy. Uh, see you next week. Bye. Bye. Bye.